My name's Mario Fabri, I'm a chef, and I have over 10 years of experience dehydrating food. It's a wonderful way to expand your culinary horizon, make better tasting food, preserve your food to make it last longer, and make more nutritious food. Today, I'll be showing you some great demonstrations for everything you could do with your dehydrator. First, we're gonna be making fruit leathers, and then my friend Jason is going to show you how to make homemade spices and different types of jerky. I'm gonna show you a couple things you probably never knew you could do in your dehydrator. We're making coconut yogurt, dog treats. We're gonna dehydrate some herbs and some flowers and make some delicious tea blends. All that coming up later, but first, with all these benefits for dehydrating, it makes me wonder, why aren't more people dehydrating? We all wanna eat healthier. Dehydrating is one of the best ways to do it. And I think one of the biggest problems is that, look at this, this is your average dehydrator. They are so big and bulky. Problem is there's nowhere for you to store it. It's super heavy. It's just the biggest inconvenience in your kitchen. If I were to give this to my grandmother for Christmas, she would have nowhere to put it and it would become a burden in her kitchen. So that's a huge problem with dehydrators. Let's get rid of this because I have found the solution. This is the Sahara dehydrator. It is the most compact, first ever and only folding dehydrator. So it makes it super easy for it to store on your cabinets or anywhere around your kitchen. And after you unfold it, it has just as much dehydrating space as the other guys. Let me show you guys how it works. Take the top off, the back easily stands up. There's a little notch on top. Front slides out. You can see this beautiful tempered glass. It is just gorgeous. Top goes back on. Close it. Bonus, comes with a drip tray so it's mess free. There's stainless steel shelves. And then look at this. They also offer heavy duty thick dehydrating mats, which are great for if you're dehydrating something small or liquidy and you don't want it to fall through. Now, let's talk about so many of the different things that you can do in your dehydrator and how it can help you get the most out of your food. We're gonna start with fruits and vegetables. I'm gonna show you how to make fruit leathers. Let's get into it. All you're gonna need are some of your favorite fruits, maybe a little bit of spices and seasonings, and a blender and your Sahara dehydrator. Step one, we're gonna blend up some fruit. Prepare your dehydrator by laying out a silicone mat on the shelf. These mats are really sturdy. They're reinforced to keep them from ripping, nice and thick, and can even be used as baking mats. Spread the puree out on a mat. You want it to be pretty thin and just thick enough so that you can actually see the mat through it. Dehydrating fruits and vegetables can be tricky because they are packed with moisture. And the goal of the dehydrator is to remove all the moisture and water. And when the water in the food evaporates, it cools down the air flowing through the machine and slows down the dehydration. So the Sahara Dehydrator helps prevent this with features that increase control over temperature and airflow. The first feature is dual time and temperature mode. Let me show you how it works. I can set the dehydrator to start at a higher temperature for the beginning to evaporate the majority of the moisture. Then I make it automatically switch to a lower temperature to let it slowly dehydrate for the best texture so you don't overheat the food. And dual time and temperature control mode does this automatically. Next, there's the air filters. Most dehydrators don't even have air filters, which is crazy to me because then they're just filling up with dust and mold in the back of it. It becomes impossible to clean and it's actually damaging to the nutrients in your food. So Sahara Dehydrator, they don't have one. They have two air filters that you could choose from. The mesh filter is installed by default and provides the most filtration of incoming air. If you live in a human climate or are dehydrating very wet foods, you can switch to the screen filter, which increases airflow while still filtering out to make sure you're fueling it with clean, healthy air. Now the next feature to this is temperature sensors. The dual temperature sensors measure the air temperature both coming out of the heater and circulating inside of the machine, which allow it to adjust automatically to changing moisture content to keep the interior temperature where it should be even when the food is moist. It has dual 350 watt heaters, so it is packed with power for a total of 700 watts. The Sahara automatically senses when both heaters are needed, when food becomes drier, or when operating at a lower temperature, one heater automatically shuts off for better temperature control. It has a radial fan which helps evenly distribute heat for even heating. You can easily switch the display from Celsius to Fahrenheit mode, 
The highest temperature is 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. You can dehydrate up to 99 hours on one setting, but because it has two settings, remember the dual time and temperature control, this thing could reach 198 hours of dehydrating time. The total dehydrating area is over one square meter of space, so this isn't your average dehydrator. This is a technological advancement in dehydration. Now that we're done with the fruit and vegetable portion, let's get into something that's a little bit more umami and savory. Let's work on some jerky. I got my buddy Jason, who is a jerky expert. He's gonna come join me in the kitchen. He's gonna take over for us and teach you guys how to make a variety of different types of jerky. Now I'm gonna pass it over to my buddy Jason, who's an incredible chef. Jason, what are we making in the dehydrator? Today we're making two types of jerkies. We're gonna be making a mushroom jerky as well as a healthy salmon jerky. When most people think of jerky, they just simply think of beef jerky. But the truth is, there's so many more options. There's turkey, there's salmon, and there's even mushroom jerky. Once you pick your protein, you can really customize the flavoring. To begin, I'm first going to dehydrate some spices that we're gonna use for our marinade. Here we have some thyme, rosemary, oregano, fresh garlic, red onions, ginger, and chilies. What's fun is that you can dehydrate almost anything and turn it into your own custom spice blend. To make the spices, we're first gonna slice them thinly and evenly. These are gonna help them dehydrate more quickly and uniformly. We're gonna start with ginger. Next, we're just gonna spread our ginger out on the rack and place it right in the dehydrator. And we're gonna get a ton of spice out of this. And now we're just gonna take our herbs and we're gonna put these out on an even layer across our dehydrator sheet. Remember Mario saying that Sahara has over one square meter of dehydrator space? Well, that's gonna pay off right now because we're gonna pack this thing to the brim. Minced garlic. And for the final step of our spices, we're simply gonna thinly slice our peppers. Now we're simply gonna dehydrate at 57 degrees Celsius for four to seven hours. Now the peppers are gonna take a little bit longer, but just let them go until they get nice and crispy. We wanna be gentle with these to preserve their flavor. So we're using a lower temperature and a longer time. Lucky for us, I have some finished ones right here. So we're simply gonna add them to our spice grinder, blitz them up, and then we're gonna add all this to our marinade. Once you've made all these spices, you can store them in your spice cabinet and use them for months. Let's get working on this mushroom jerky. So first things first, we're gonna make our marinade. We're gonna have olive oil. Next, we just have soy sauce, or you can substitute with tamari or even coconut aminos for a soy-free version. And then lastly, we have red wine vinegar. Those are the liquid ingredients. Now let's move on to the dry ingredients. We have the homemade Italian seasoning that we made right here in the Sahara dehydrator. We're gonna put about one tablespoon's worth. And then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And an equivalent amount of onion powder. And as you can see, we've very much gone for an Italian uh, flavor inspired mushrooms. And if you don't wanna make your own spices, you can simply buy them from the store. So I'm gonna mix this up really quick. So now let's just add our mushrooms in. These are portobello mushrooms that we just super thinly sliced. It was four large portobello mushrooms, which is plenty. I'm gonna just get dirty with my hands, give it a mix to incorporate all this marinade over each individual piece of mushrooms. And then we're just gonna let it sit for a little while. All right guys, our mushrooms are marinated. I can tell they're gonna be super flavorful. So now we're just gonna lay them out in a thin, even layer across our tray. And this is the one with the silicone mat on it. So none of the marinade leaks through our dehydrator. So let's just add these to our dehydrator now and we'll let them go until they get nice and chewy. Guys, it is now time to make our salmon jerky. Now this is a great healthy alternative to red meat and it's packed with protein and filled with omega-3 
fatty acids. And when we make it, the flaky texture is gonna be perfect to top on salads and pastas. First things first, let's prep our marinade. So we're gonna start with 1 4th cup of soy sauce. Next, we're gonna add one tablespoon of molasses, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of liquid smoke. We have two teaspoons of black pepper. And then finally, we just have one fourth teaspoon of fresh garlic powder, which again, we also made in our dehydrator. So I'm gonna give this a quick whisk, then we're gonna cut our salmon up and put it into our marinade and let it sit. We have a beautiful piece here of wild caught coho salmon, which is a leaner type of salmon, which is perfect for dehydrating. To cut it up and prep it for our marinade, we're first gonna cut an incision, and then we're gonna cut under the skin to take the filet off the skin. We're gonna slice our filet in half, and then we're gonna slice it into strips lengthwise, about 1 4th to 1 8th inch thick. We're now gonna add our salmon to the marinade and let it sit for about two to three hours. Our salmon has now marinated and we're simply gonna add it to our silicone mat and place it in the dehydrator at 73 degrees for eight hours. And what's great about the Sahara dehydrator is it has the ability to get to high temps to kill any bacteria to make any fish or meat safe to eat. All right, Jason, the jerky master. I see we got some good stuff going on. What do we got for me today? So that one is mushroom jerky. We used portobellos. And then this is our coho salmon jerky that's super smoky with like liquid smoke, a lot of black pepper and molasses and all that good stuff. So I think they both turned out pretty well. I'm excited to try them. So I think we just give them a try. I'm just gonna grab one of these mushroom jerky. I'll go for one of these. Mmm. Yeah. My Italian grandmother, she would be proud. I could taste the flavor. We got the rosemary, we got the thyme, oregano in there. You're the jerky master. I'm gonna take over from now on. We're gonna step into some, I'm gonna show you guys how we can make yogurt and ferments in the dehydrator when we come back. But thanks again, Jason. Man. Hey, thank you for having me and uh, good luck with the yogurt. Love it. All right, thank you. We're gonna hop into some yogurt recipes when we come back. Now let's make yogurt in our dehydrator. All you're gonna need are two ingredients, milk and yogurt with a live active culture. This is totally unlike store-bought yogurt, which can be packed with sugar and preservatives. We're making it clean and healthy. I'm gonna be making coconut yogurt. You're gonna to wanna to start with a glass jar that you have completely sanitized, run it under hot water, kill any bad bacteria. Add in the milk, stir in a scoop of yogurt. The live active cultures in the yogurt will spread to the milk and turn it into yogurt during the dehydration process. Let's add the jar to our dehydrator. Our method of yogurt uses the high-low method. We start with a hot temperature to speed up culturing and provide the most food safe conditions possible. Then switch to a lower temperature to achieve a firm and smooth set. Start it at 49 degrees Celsius for three hours, then set it to 38 degrees Celsius for 12 to 18 hours, depending on how thick you want it. We got our coconut yogurt, perfection. Let's add some dehydrated raspberries, some slivered almonds, and enjoy. Now let's make another recipe you probably didn't know you could make in your dehydrator. We're gonna make dog treats. Homemade dog treats are such a great way to personalize your treats for your pets. You can make them big, small, you could transform the textures, and you can find something that really suits your pet's palate. You can control the sizing so they could either be tiny for your terrier or large for your greyhound. Even the texture can be personalized by adjusting the dehydration time. A great recipe to start with is peanut butter apple soft treats. These are great for training. They're soft for your dog's teeth. Let's get into it, just a couple ingredients. And add them to a mixing bowl, two cups of whole wheat flour, one cup of rolled oats, one cup of applesauce unsweetened, one cup of peanut butter. Make sure it's natural and with no xylitol, that could be bad for your dogs, and a half cup of blueberries. Now get your hands dirty and mix them together. Add some flour to your cutting board and roll out the dough until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Use a cookie cutter to make cute shapes or you could just use your hands to make little flat circles. Add them to your dehydrator sheet. Dehydrate for seven hours at 74 degrees Celsius. You want the treats to be dry, still spongy. 
Now that we've made some treats for our dogs, you know, sometimes we take better care of our dogs than we do of ourselves, but I think we earned a chance to relax, so that's why we're gonna move on to the tea portion of the dehydrating segment. I remember earlier I said how the dehydrator has incredible temperature control. It's able to sense when it's gotten too hot. You're able to use incredibly low temperatures and extremely long times, which is really important when you're dehydrating things like flower petals, mints, herbs, spices, anything you could find in your garden. A lot of things you could find organically in nature are great things to add to your tea blends. So I'm gonna show you guys some custom tea blends and how you can get a little bit extra creative in the kitchen. So step one, already, right here, we're gonna make green tea. I have some dehydrated green tea leaves. We have some ginger. Now this is ginger from earlier. Again, a lot of those spices we made during the spices and seasoning with Jason, those still apply. And then I had a little bit of lemon peel laying around. I threw it in my dehydrator. A little bit of extra lemon flavor for our tea. So these are our tea ingredients. I have my mesh tea bag right here. We're just gonna add some of our ingredients. Green tea in. Ginger, seal it. Ginger, green tea bag, all set. Add it to our mug. Back here, kettle. One of the best things about your dehydrator is that you can get and create flavors so different than what you would normally find at the grocery store. Like right over here, I got strawberries, mangoes, raspberries. I wanna add a little bit of extra fruit sweetener to my tea. It's so easy to do that. Just throw it into your little tea bag, let it steep. The longer you steep this, more flavor. I forgot one more thing. Let's add in the final piece. Just drop a little lemon peel in there. We're gonna let that steep for a couple minutes. Now, let's hop into some more tea recipes. So I got a couple of fresh herbs and we're gonna, we're gonna chop those up and we're gonna add those to the dehydrator and just keep making tea blends. Let's hop back into it. Mandarin oranges. I have some already finished ones right here. Now I've got some mint, and this is just the same thing you do for chamomile, green tea, stevia, whatever herbs, whatever delicate leaves you have that you want to dehydrate. Let's throw these in the dehydrator. For our next tea blend, lion's mane. This has so many health benefits. We're gonna put this on our silicone mat because we don't want any pieces to fall through, and just gently, with your hand, peel it. Lion's Mane Tea is one of those things that you see at the grocery stores these days. It's very expensive, but you probably didn't realize you could just make this stuff at home. Save yourself a little bit of money. Let's throw this in the dehydrator. All right, I got some finished Lion's Mane mushrooms right here. These have been dehydrated. They are perfectly crispy. Let's do a little snap test. Perfect, that's exactly what you want. Let's add some of these to our tea bag once again. Beautiful glass mug by Broughton Taylor. Always gotta have a good gooseneck tea kettle. Once again from Broughton Taylor. Fill this bad boy up, let it steam, let it steep. And we are making our own homemade tea. Normally I'd be buying this at the grocery store, but I'm saving money, I'm having fun in the kitchen, and we got homemade Lion's Mane tea. Now, let me show you what else we could do with this. We got some organic rose petals and some chamomile. Sleepy time tea. Another great thing about making your own tea blends is you can go with the seasons, whatever is in season, like these rose buds is a good indication to what you should be adding to your tea. And just a quick reminder, everything that we made today can easily be put in these incredible containers and leave in your storage cabinet. It lasts for months, so you can have tea all year round and you're never wasting anything. We're using our lemon peels, our orange peels. It's a great way to reduce your waste. Now, I'm gonna clean the set a little bit. We're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna tell you the last couple reasons why this is my favorite dehydrator you could ever buy. Come back to you.
That about wraps it up. Today, we made a ton of snacks that you guys could eat right away or preserved for months and you could repurpose and use in your recipes in the future. The Sahara Dehydrator makes it easy and fun to prepare dehydrated foods. That's the way it should be. Now, there's nothing left to do but enjoy this delicious spread. And for more information on the Sahara Dehydrator, visit the Broden Taylor website. You could also get written recipes, sign up for the email newsletter if you wanna get some of these recipes delivered directly to you. Thanks for watching. Get out there, get dehydrating. Amazing. <laughs>